One of the things that did happen is a, a group of refugees from Burma began attending the church, and through another series of in, in, well, through God's inspiration, we started a farm with them on the on the property the church was sitting on, and that began to resurrect the whole situation, both in uh, terms of parish attendance, but also uh, to our financial life and addressing the financial needs of the parish. And as I said, we were heavily indebted with the mortgage on the building, and this prov- this inspiration of a farm is what began to resurrect the whole set of circumstances such that we didn't have to sell the property, we didn't have to sell the church, which had come on the table at some point in our journey there. And then we're out in the middle of the, after things had gotten going, and we were really laboring under different challenges at that point, uh, but still dealing with financial provision difficulties, uh, needing equipment for the farm that we couldn't afford. Uh, we took this walk out in the wilderness, and God struck a rock, and some water gushed out that we needed. Hmm. So this farm was obviously a unifying force in your entire community. Now this is a this is a church. I take it you had some some land adjacent to where your church building sat is that the church sat on about 22 acres of land 17 acres of which was bottom farm old bottom Uh farmland and when the refugees arrived they asked if they could plant some little gardens out there but we the church had entered into a a land use deal with the city of Smyrna Uh, they would maintain the lawn if they could use it for practice softball fields we decided to turn it over to farming, or actually the Lord told us to turn it over for farming. Uh, and that's another story in itself. Um, but th- that, that was the resource that we had at the parish to put to use. So there is somewhat of a story of using what God has given you and turn it over to him and allow him to do his work and you just it sounds like to me you were faithful you were obedient and you had the the opportunity to see God do amazing things through just using what <laughs> using what was available at the time I think you're absolutely right Bob um we had nothing we had nothing to give I mean we were a place that was financially bereft we had no money but we had this beautiful piece of property and we had the people there who were ready to do God's will and we had people who were there who were willing to do whatever needed to be done so we took all of our time and our talents and we moved them in the way in which God wanted us to work and I think that was the most wonderful part of the story. We've often likened it to the parable of the talents where the householder leaves a bit of money behind for three of his stewards and then asks them to give an account of what they did with it when he got back. And of course, one fellow just doesn't do anything with it, buries it in the ground, but the others get a return on the investment. And we felt that God had entrusted us with this piece of property. We were the stewards of it for the time that we would possess it in the history of this piece of property, which had been there since the foundation of the earth. (laughs) But for a time it became ours, and we had to put it to use and see what what return we could we would get on this and and what return it was was an abundance of the love of Christ an abundance of safety and security for a group of refugees who had made their way to us new life for a struggling congregation uh, the breath of the spirit blowing through the community in a way that it had never happened before so these are the sorts of the returns that we began to receive just by being faithful to what God asked us to do 